Hi, this is Stefan from Feed the Hungry, and I want to say thank you to everyone at Revival today, the staff, the teams, the partners, uh, Brother Jonathan and Sister Dallas. Your hearts are touching the lives of the least of these all around the world. And I'm in San Antonito in Guatemala, way out in the rural areas, way away from the capital. On this area, there's a lot of uh, corn and, and millet and, uh, and watermelons growing. Um, these folks are agriculturalists, and today we're at Assemblies of God Church where we're starting a new feeding program for kids. It's a celebratory time, kind of a Feliz Navidad, a Merry Christmas for these kids here as they know that their prayers are going to be answered. And the moms, as they pray, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. We began with 250,000 kids in 2019, and we're going to finish up with right around 280,000. Our goal for these next few years is to see half a million of the world's most vulnerable children find food and a future in Jesus Christ. And because of friends like you, we know that goal is going to be a reality. Now, hunger never takes a holiday, so thank you for standing with us throughout the years and each and every day of the year to reach out to the least of these and to show them that a full life feels good and a full life can be found in Christ. God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year to everyone at Revival today. Evangelist Jonathan Shuttlesworth, thank you for watching today's broadcast. I want to make you aware of a couple things. Number one is you can get my podcast on any of the platforms that are listed on the screen right now. Number two, we have an app that contains our 24-hour radio station, Revival Today Radio, that I promise you if you make that a part of your daily routine, it'll change your life immeasurably. The app is Revival Today. It's free to download. And you can find our radio station along with many other useful things there. Number three, if you would go on our YouTube channel, Jonathan Shuttlesworth, and click the subscribe button, that helps me. I look forward to seeing you in just a couple minutes live. Thanks again for watching. What's up? This is Jonathan Shuttlesworth inviting you to our fasting and prayer services to begin the new year, 2020. You know, how you begin a year matters. And when you begin it in fasting and prayer, anyone will tell you that's participated with us in the past that you see God do amazing things. Look at the change in the nation since we've started doing these meetings and praying for America. And then you talk to people who have been a part of it. The same God that's bringing great change to America brings change to the people who take time to humble themselves and pray on behalf of their nation and their church and their generation. So I don't want you to miss out on it. January 2nd through the 22nd at Champion Christian Center every day at noon and 7 p.m. Everybody can't come for all 21 days, but everyone can come for three days. You might have to get on a plane or a bus or an ox cart or a rickshaw, whatever you have to do. Get to the greater Pittsburgh area and join us for these life-changing meetings. Mark chapter 9, Jesus clearly said that there's certain limitations, certain things that won't happen, unless you combine fasting with prayer. But when you combine them, it's explosive. This is going to be the greatest year you've ever had as you hook in with God. I look forward to seeing you to start the new year. God bless you. And God will do two things tonight. That demon that's assigned to your life, he'll pick him up and throw him out of here. And then he'll minister his power to your body. I came to get this message to the people. And no devil in hell is going to stop me. But when you stand up straight with your shoulders back and have a clean look in your eye, the fire of God down in your spirit, and he sees that you know who you are, the devil will back off for free. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ, every demon spirit assigned to your life, it backs off for free today in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for thou art good. Thy mercy endureth forever. Praise God. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my name, your name be magnified, glorified. 
Praise God and your plan, your plan, your purpose come into full fruition. Mama Pato Stampra Frebefi Janasta Stampra Tota Tade Lefra Mefi Janama Kun Samba Bata Pevi Inge Geta Suno Tonda Dada Dega Dibeve. Eme Meha, Eme Meha, Eme Meha Mahuta Pa, Eme Meha Hatu Poto Topra Frebefi. Mama Mano Sopra Tom Tonta Sutoro Te Jenny Stesteti Sun Tono To Stesteti. <laughs> oh, Mambra de Sam Mambra de Protoston Profrepevi, Sum Proton for a long gun singing in him, and Mimimi and Sun Contando the Brafrepevi, Bebe Petuchus and all Profrepevi, Mimimi his Profrepevi, Mimimi his Profrepe, and 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 Soto Sotota. That's the motor, that's the no portal of a peffy each kind of stuck at time. All retouch it, all retouch it, all retouch it, all retouch it. Oh, oh, man, sign, kind, nine, mando, sando, kando, prat. <laughs> As an okata, as an okata pala, as an okata pala bafa, elurene fejanos to, bredi stampre frebefi ejanos to stantam te te, me 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 he stampre frepere fi ejanos to stanamara do kurata katite, stampre prapa tante me ene me he stantara, man stampre frepefi ejanos to stantan tante. Santa Ton Tantante, Santa Ton Tantante, Santa Ton Tantante, Santa Ton Tantante, Prati, Prati Tora Tora Te Prefre Pefe de Brati, Sana Pato Ute Ench, Sonore Dench, Denfre Mefe e Janesta Stata, Lorene Kia Pratados Custone de Kehi, Sokona Nama Kehi, Sokona Nama Kehi, Palo Husaka. And, and, and so, oh, oh, Nanny Midis, Nanny Midis, do, Nanny Midis, do, ta, Nanny Midis, do, stadaba, Nanny Midis, do, stadaba, Sana Mokta, prefre, pefe, e justo, te, Esama, fa, papara, da, fe, en, ste, no, contana, hehehe, Lorene, ki, ampra, no, contan, cantan, to, de, de, fa, pe, ve, en, su, to, ta, de, Ebra tu stambre vrebe, esta tu prambre frebebe, juton corneas, a mamá con tanto de tela tan tante, me 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 he su toro tele brafra, befre frepi fiti seza maton tonta, era mato teneti, era mato tenteti, era namuta titi, papto libra de beti numbarata. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, 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 Malute, Esunto, Tambrege, Mengiga, Ukanga, Sukute, Elechi, Elechi Ito, Elechi Eche Eto, Eche Ete Eto, Prafara Batisa Dapa, Mamala on Staki Kige Gatuka, but don't stuck can't get back, don't get that date, Satan date, don't brat, don't got that and that and that and Satan gate and date and broken goat and that. Hey, 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 hey. Lambra Tochi, Lambra Tochi, Lambra Mara, Lambra Tochi, Mara, Lambra Tochi, Mara Day, Lambra Tochi, Mara Day Pa, Mabra Tochi, Nara Bay Fe, Malabra Chito Prefet Ife, hey, 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 Sunday, Sunday, Conday, Monday, Palonde, 
en sicotore de te en sicia cadabra me 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 hesote me 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 hesote me 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 hesote parande monge ngeni minga nsuno no ngeni minga na mansanga na mongongo ni mingi ugi sukutulu lo bragidi mi kandala ba hasamoro kandi me ni vidi mi kandola Adolochari, 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 Pratindini. Asomra frate, Zambrandan tantana brandiki sagadokara, Esekore de frepe vizunga, Palorangege zomotole bradere. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 Makadi. Oh, oh, mm mm. Mama Maya Ho. Mama Maya Ho. Mama Maya Ho. Mama Maya Ho Nay. Mama Man. Mama Maya No. Mama Ya No None of Me. Mama Lu Jet Jet Duk Dek Lit Vret Bet Vet Jet Dek Gek Gek Lit Brat Duk Dak Gat Lat Brat Gat Duk Gek Zit Gek Gek Nak Mok Duk Dak Dak Brat Mak Gat Dek Vet E Jut Duk Uk Gat Dak He 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 Si hude te bradivo. Good morning, everybody. It's day 13? 14? I purposely don't count. But now we're, we're uh, you know, about a week out before this thing ends. So I'm encouraging every person that has yet to take time to pray and fast with us, start today. Today is a good day to push away the food. I'm telling you what, you do not have to be in ministry to do this. You do not have to, um, if you've never done it before, start with the meal. Start with two meals. Have one meal. Break it at six. That's an easy peasy thing to do. Don't eat at all. Just have liquids. And then, uh, you know, not like a frappuccino. If you're going to break at six, come on. Um, but it's, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. Even if you do three days, just do it. So, um, we are about a week out and I just want to let everybody know that, um, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. I'm, I'm, I too am pushing away the plate. Aloha everybody. And, um, and because of that, I want to do something nice for everybody. And so we have these collection of books. We all know that. Okay. But today we just got a brand new shipment of our um, fierce posters. And really we have a, a poster for every one of these books. So if you go on themightyseries.com, <clears throat> that is themightyseries.com and you order a book, you will receive a free poster. All you have to do is put the code hashtag no food. Okay? Hashtag no food. I haven't been uh, doing as much grocery shopping as I normally do, so I tend to I shop a lot during this time. I don't know if anybody feels me on that. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm giving you a little bit of a break here, a little bit of a, a, of a, of a bonus in this time of hashtag no food. Um, with your purchase of a mighty series book, you will get a free poster. And, um, if you have a confident poster, if you have the fierce poster, um, we have mighty God, mighty me poster. So you can choose what poster you want with the copy of your book that is from today, hashtag no food until Sunday, because um, there should be a benefit. Hmm? This time of prayer and fasting. Again, that's the mighty series.com. If you order it off Amazon, I 
we don't have control over the, those kinds of orders. That's Amazon. Amazon done do that. And so uh, order from themightyseries.com. And at that website, you will also see that we just put out, up a, a brand new blog for the parents. And it is about fasting. Why do we fast? What is the importance of fasting and all that kind of stuff? But right now, let's delve into prayer with understanding. And um, so we've talked a lot about these last few days about the practicality of God's word, um, how he's given you a mind to think out of situations that we can't like continue to just, you know, put things on the Lord. Um, then Kofi preached a stellar message yesterday about seeing things um, so that you can uh, seeing it with the eyes of your heart seeing the things in the word of God with your spirit so that you have the power to become them. And today I want to talk about um, prayer with understanding. How important it is because prayer without understanding is null and void. It, it, it's of no benefit. It goes kaput. There's no, there's no sense of you praying without first having an understanding of what the Spirit of God is saying to you. And, and that's why we have to walk in the Spirit every single day. We have to walk uh, not in carnality, not with what we see, but with the eyes of our understanding based on the Word of God, based on what the Holy Ghost is saying. We are spiritual people and we have to discern the times. We're living in a new era. We're living, uh, you know, now we're into 2020. There is a new, it, you, you could just kind of taste it in the air, can't you? You know, every time I drive um, to the coast, before you even see the water, there's just the, the salt is in the air. You could taste it. There's, you can smell it. There's just, there's, it feels different when you're over by the coast. I feel that there's something different here in 2020. And we have to be people that are going to discern the times. Because if we don't, we can miss it. We have um, the, uh, we are very much people that are susceptible to um, missing God's blessing. Or maybe even being late for it. And so don't be that person. Don't be that person that, that can't discern the seasons, can't discern the, the time that we're living in. God has made you a spiritual person. You are first a spirit. And spirit calls on to spirit. Deep calls on to deep. And so in, in this time of prayer and fasting, I feel like there's a lot of you that all of a sudden there's just something that's come alive on the inside of you. Something that's come uh, 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 awake, it's just like jolted up out of, out of uh, the, the, the place of dormancy and now it's erupting and, and you're sensing it and you're thinking like, what could this be? I, there's just something different. And, and, and if you're in that, in that season, I'm encouraging you when things don't really look a certain way and maybe you feel like you're frustrated, maybe there's just kind of like that tightness, you know, where you're like... Mm. Like this just, and, and, and sometimes what that, that feeling of tightness is, it's like, you're no longer fitting in that coat anymore. So you, you try to put it on and you're just not comfortable anymore. It's tight. It's restricting. And you're like, I just, I, there's some, what could it be? And, and the thing that, that it's, uh, that, that feeling is compelling you to or drawing you to is it's, it's the season of change. And I hate to say it's like the seasons change because people have like, so, you know, you know, this is a season of, yeah. but it is, it, um, there's, there's change that is going to manifest. And, and we talked a little bit about that, how, um, uh, on Monday that you are the one that is going to usher in the change. You are the resolve for your life. You and only you can turn that thing around. And God has propelled you. God has uh, called you. He has placed you over the kingdoms and the nations of this world. And you are to uproot. You are to plant. You are to do something about what's happening around you that maybe you're not happy with. And um, that's, that's, a, that's a very sobering thought because for too long, there's a lot of us that have placed that responsibility on God. And God is saying, I've, I did all I could. It's, it, it's now, it's time for you to realize 
what is happening around you and rise up to the occasion. It is time for you to rise up to the occasion. And this is what this is about. Prayer with understanding will never amount to anything. If there's no understanding with what it is that you're praying and really understanding clarity, wisdom, um, all of that comes from the word of God. And so if you're not going to do your due diligence in seeking what the word of God has to say about your situation, then, um, you know, things just aren't going to change. This year is just going to be a repeat of the last. And, and while other people are soaring high, while other people are, are, their lives are changing, you know, have you ever wondered why there's just, why is it that there's some people who just, you know, they're just flying high and it just seems like the rich get richer, you know, the poor get poorer. There's something to that. And, 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 and so if, if we can just, you know, begin to incline ourselves to the word of God instead of what we feel, I feel like, you know, be what quit walking in the carnality of life and get in to the spiritual things because God is speaking to you. He wants to move through you. This is the whole point of this message. You are not a pawn in, in, in the scheme of the, it's, you're not a, a pawn in the, in the game. You are not just like a, the, the extra you are what God wants. You are God's vessel. He wants to move through you. He wants to do signs and wonders through your life. He wants to use you. And so I think too many of us, and I, I, I was a victim to that myself, where I thought I'm just an added element to the ministry of Jonathan Shuttlesworth. Until I realized what the word of God had to say about me, then I began to incline myself to spiritual things. God gave me a message and he said, no, you're, you have something to do. You're not just an aid. You're not just to, to help the man of God out. I want to do something through you. I want change to happen through you. I want to move on your behalf. And see, once, once you begin to see those things, then all of a sudden everything changes because you're no longer just like, oh, I'm here in the peripheral. I'm here just as an extra. I'm here as the sidekick. You're not. You're here at, because God wants you to be here and God has purposed you to be here. So we're starting today off in Daniel 9, 1 through 7. And I'm going to show you a couple of timelines because I want this to be something that will resonate with you visually, spiritually, um, and just have it be something that you just meditate on all day. Um, Daniel 9, 1 through 7, it says, it was the first year of the reign of Darius the Mede, the son of Ahasuerus, who became king of the Babylonians. During this first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord. Say law for a minute. I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord. As revealed to Jeremiah the prophet, that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. Yeah. I also wore rough burlap and sprinkled myself with ashes, and I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, O Lord, you are a great and awesome God. You are always fulfilling your covenant, and you keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations. We have refused to listen to your servants, the prophets, who spoke on your authority to our kings and princesses and ancestors and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are in the right. But as you see, our faces are covered with shame. This is true of all of us, including the people of Judah and Jerusalem and all Israel, scattered near and far, wherever you have driven us because of our disloyalty to you. Listen, he continues on to pray. 
But see, lots of us keep, continue to pray about certain things, and we don't really have a clear understanding as to why we're even praying about these things. And, and we just, we take the time to pray and fast, and God, just help my family. The end. God, make, you know, um, my daughter the best. Amen. Um, God, uh, promote me. Prom bring the promotion in my job. Amen. And, and, you know, wh but why? Why, why? Why do you want the promotion? Why is it that you want these things to happen and be in full effect in your life? There's a why to that. And so Daniel came to that realization by the study of the word of God, because it says it here. I learned from the reading of the prophet Jeremiah. And, and when Jeremiah was giving this prophet, Daniel was just a, 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 just a kid. So, so, you know, he was saying, wait a minute, there's, there's, there's something to that. I got to get back to the word. And so now they had been held into captivity about, uh, uh, put, put that picture up, Ram, about the, the, the Bible time timeline of Daniel. And so I'm going to show you exactly where he's at in this timeline, because it was, um, you know, we're all doing like, not all, I'm not. There's lots of you who've chosen to do the Daniel fast. That one's, that was in 605 BC, before Christ. 605 BC. That's when Daniel was just a wee boy, okay? And now, if you see, we're in chapter 9. This is 539 BC, okay? So now we're talking about 66, 67 years already into this kind of captivity where Daniel comes to the realization, listen, I remembered as a boy that there was this prophet, there was this word. The word of God came forth and it, it said that we were supposed to be in captivity for 70 years. I'm going to get back to that word and see what's up. And so he read the word. The Bible says, I learned from reading the word and it was revealed to me through Jeremiah, the prophet that Jerusalem had to lie desolate for 70 years. So, so he did his due diligence, right? And now praying and fasting and pleading with God, no longer was it just a God, you know, help me out of this, you know, um, den. Help me out, God. Make me this. Do this. Now it was like, wait a minute. I, now I've got eyes in, uh, to, to see in my spirit, to discern the, 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 the signs of the time and realize, come to that realization. You can take it off. Come to that realization that mm, it's time. There's time for a change. So we're drawing forth towards that 70-year blessing. And I, I'm not really seeing anything headed towards our freedom. So I got to, I got to anoint myself. I got to put that, that burlap. I got to, I got to, you know, begin to pray and fast and seek God. And all of a sudden that understanding gave Daniel the power to pray those prayers. God, I know we've sinned against you. I know that the prophet had to say that word, but now it's time to set us free. And, and, and now it's time for us to, to go back home. We need to go back home. You, the, these 70 years are drawing to. So he took it upon himself as a man of God to say, one person, to say, it's time. There's, there's got to be a time that, that, you know, this thing draws to an end. Right now it seems pretty like nothing is happening. I can discern the times in my spirit, but right now everything looks the same and things are just going to continue to stay the same until you rise up to the occasion and see things the way that Daniel saw and all of a sudden your prayers change. So it's no longer about God, give me a house. God, give me a car. God, I want this. I want to be known. It, there's something deeper. There's something deeper than that. There's, there's a purpose for all those things. So you don't, you don't just pray little, little, little menial prayer. And yet, like if you understood the bigger picture, you'd pray bigger prayers. That's it. And when you begin to see the way God sees here, I'm talking about 
with your network, with your family, and you begin to see the overall picture of it, man, all of a sudden you're like, I've got eyes for, for just myself. I've got eyes on like something so much bigger. And you know what that is? Seek first the, the, the establishment of the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And then what's going to happen? All these things shall be added unto you so that you don't even have to make those things a prayer anymore. All you have to do and concentrate on is what are you saying, Lord? What can I do to help in this situation? Tell me what I can do to change the course of this family's life. Tell me what I can do to change the course of my business's life, this ministry's life, my church's life. Get involved in something greater than just me, myself, and I. And I'm telling you right now, God will use you to bring that change. So it was 68 years had gone by now that they began to peace out on the Babylonians and, and, and retreat back to, to their homeland where God set them free. After, after the, the 68 years, but I, I wonder to myself, could, would that have been longer? Absolutely, it would have been longer if there wasn't one person to rise to the occasion and say, I, 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 I see what's happening. I see the word and now I'm going to pray and fast according to what the word has declared over our lives. Because if, if you're in this generation, you are because you're alive and you're breathing. There's a part that you have to play. And so I, I want to. Um, I want to. I was drawn immediately to, OK. God said 70 years, but they peaced out on 68. So who knows if Daniel just was like, yeah, at year 60, listen, I remember now it's, a, you know, 10 years is pretty close. Now let's, let's start gearing up that God would have changed the course. You know that God, you, you can actually do something to move the hand of God, even with what, you know, he has prophesied over a nation. You could say, just like that king, he said, you've got just a few more years left. But that king, uh, uh, he prayed and he fasted and he said, oh, Lord, and, and God extended his life on earth. That word was already declared over his life. But God changed his mind because the man of God had enough sense to repent and seek the Lord and say, man, I'm sorry, I missed it. Your, your path. And this is all, this all stems back from the message that I was preaching on, on Monday. These things that we see are temporal. I can never say that word right. They're temporal. So that's subject to change. Everything you see in your life, because we have eyes in the natural, everything that's natural, they're all temporal. They're subject to change. And you know who can change them? You, I, me, we, we can change those things. But the things that we don't see, those things are eternal, right? So we could actually do something about the right now. If you're fed up with how life has been, if you are, are, are sick and tired of, of just generation after generation doing the same old thing, nobody breaking out of that rut, nobody breaking out of the cycle, guess what? That's why you feel uncomfortable. That's why you're like, I got I to gotta do something. And so let me remind you what the difference is. You've got Daniel who stood in the gap and he said, listen, it's time. And God said, oh, yeah, no, no, it's time. Fine, I'll do that. I'll do that. I like you. And then we have as declared here in Genesis 15, 12, which I'm, gonna, I'm going to read. There's so much about Abraham's life. As the sun was going down, Abraham, uh, Je Abraham Genesis 15, 12. Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a terrifying darkness came down over him. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Abram at the time, you can be sure that your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land where they will be oppressed as slaves for 400 years, but I will punish the nation that enslaves them. And in the end, they will come away with great wealth. If you're thinking about like Moses and the parting of the Red Sea, ding, 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 ding. As
as for because the Bible says when they left, he loaded them with silver and gold. He caused those men to give all their silver and gold up to the um, to the Israelites. As for you, you will die in peace and be buried a ripe old man. After four generations, your descendants will return here for this land. For the sins of the Amorites do not yet warrant their destruction. So tell me why. Put up that other graphic that I sent you. Tell me why when there was the call of Abram or Abraham, okay? He said there's going to be 400 years of captivity. So we can see what the, what the picture says here where Isaac was born. Then there was, um, you know, God had prophesied or, or God had spoken to, to um, Abram, 400 years of captivity, captivity. But what really transpired, there wasn't, it wasn't 400 years. It was 430 years before they were freed. So what the heck? Like, what, what's the, 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 the freaking 30 years about? I'll tell you right now. Thanks for asking. Acts 7, 1 through 36. Then the high priest said, are these things so? Okay, so like um, um, our next book, you can take the thing off. Our next book that we're coming out with is, um, it's about Saul's conversion. Okay, so Acts 7, this has been kind of like resonating with me. And, um, you know, Stephen, I've just been like really like meditating on Stephen. So when I was reading this, I'm, which I'm going to read to you, it, it all just, it all just clicked. Acts 7, 1 through until I feel like it. Then the high priest said, are these things so? And he said, brethren and fathers, listen, this is Stephen talking about. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran, and said to him, get out of the country and from your relatives and come to a land that I will show you. Then he came out of the lands of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from there, when his father was dead, he moved him to the land in which you now dwell. And God gave him no inheritance in it, not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham was, had no child, he promised to give it to him for a possession and to his descendants after him. But God spoke in this way, that his descendants would dwell in a foreign land and that they would bring them into bondage and oppress them 400 years. There it is again. And the nation to whom they will be in bondage, I will judge, said God. And after that, they shall come out and serve me in this place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham, Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat the 12 patriarchs. And the patriarchs became envious. They sold Joseph into to Egypt. But God was with him. Verse 10. And delivered him out of all his troubles and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. I'm going somewhere. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now a famine and a great trouble and great trouble came over all of the land of Egypt and Canaan. And our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And the second time Joseph was made known to his brothers and Joseph's family became known to the Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and called his father Jacob and all his relatives to him, 75 people in all. So Jacob went down to Egypt and he died, he and our fathers, and they carried back to Shechem and laid in a tomb that Abraham had bought for a sum of money from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. But when the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn 
to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another came arose who didn't know Joseph. This man dwelt, uh, dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expo- expose their babies so that they might not live. At this time, Moses was born and was well-pleasing to God, and he was brought up in his father's house for three months. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. Now, this is where we're going to. This is where I've read everything to get to this point. Now, When he was 40 years old, forty years old. Okay. Which would have put him at three hundred and ninety years of captivity with Israel in Egypt. Okay? That's the timeline we're looking at. When he was 40 years old, this is what happens, okay? It came into his heart to visit his brethren. So what does that mean? It came into Moses' heart at 40 years old to go and visit his people. So God had already, he already knew. Moses had already known. Like, I'm... uh, it's, it's feeling st- stiff in here. It's, it's sticky. I'm not feeling okay. Uh, you know, it's not comfortable. I'm in the, the, the palace. I live in the palace and I feel uncomfortable. I feel like this is just not where I belong. And you know what he did? God placed it in his heart, as Stephen was saying. And he went to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. He was already set to deliver these people at year 390, at 40 years of age. I'm talking about Moses here. He was already set to deliver God's people. It was already on the inside of him. That's why he killed the Egyptian. He had it in him. He knew, these are my people. I, I don't like this. I, 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 taste, I, I taste the salt in the air. We're close to something here. I, I, I taste something in the spirit. I don't like it. And so what did Moses do? He already began to move in the direction of delivery. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they didn't understand. That's the next verse, y'all. That was Stephen. Listen, the whole message that Stephen's talking about is you see a savior and you don't even freaking recognize it, yo. Open up your freaking eyes. You've got somebody that's uh, 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 affording you a way out. My stomach's about to grumble, so if you hear it, I'm fasting. It, you know, you've got somebody here set for your delivery, and you ignored it. And so that's what Moses was thinking. He's like, I, I mean, I've come here. I, don't you know what I've been set up to do? I know that I, I didn't just end up here in the in the in Pharaoh's, you know, uh, um, you know, palace for nothing. I thought you could dis- d- discern the times, too. But no. Seeing one of them suffer, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hands, but they didn't understand. And the next day, he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, your brethren, why do you do wrong one another? But he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? 
Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then at that saying, Moses fled and became a dweller in the land of Midian, where he had two sons. So the people had no kind of understanding for what was about to transpire. They had no, they, mira, ooh, nothing. So right when they saw, like, a, you know, like, hello, you see somebody who's coming to your people's defense, your slaves, and it's not just like a cutesy slaves. I mean, they are, are being bashed up over the head. They are forced to do laborious things. Like, they're, they're really in it. And you see somebody from the, that kingdom who's oppressing you come to your aid and you can't even see it? You can't even see the person that God has, has set to deliver you? And, and ultimately, that's why they missed it. That's why it was, it, 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 you know, Moses had to come back while, while he was 80. Because at that point, things got really bad. And then you thought that that was a demise. It just kept going down and down and down. And finally, people were like, listen, we can't live like this. We need somebody. And it's interesting because God was telling them, I've heard now the cries of my people. Now they're getting it. Finally, Moses, I'm sorry. You know, because I know you were set to do that, do that before. But they weren't, they, they couldn't see it. They couldn't understand it. They couldn't. Uh, 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 you know, they weren't people to, to discover what the word of God had to say. Man, can you imagine if, 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 if you were sentenced to prison for three and a half months and four and a half months goes by and you're still like, uh, what? That's what this that that's what I'm I'm talking to you. Like you need to discern the times. The 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 time of you being sick and remaining sick, that's it. That's enough. That's I I'm done with that. I am not going to be held captive. There's so many people that are being Yeah, just let him know that we have no internet in the entire building. Okay. I'm sorry. I mean, um. That's all right. It's recorded. It's like we can still record it if you want to finish it off and then. Yeah, I'm doing it through my phone currently. Oh, oh you're live yeah. right now? Okay, that's good. Just wait. You're not on the internet, right? You're not on Wi Fi? No. I can't ever connect on Wi-Fi in this off in this place, like never. My iPad never works. Yeah, well, they say we have the best. This is supposed to have the best internet. This is the most, in my, in my opinion, one of the most unreliable networks we've ever had, and I don't know why. Well, I mean, it's it's fiber optic, so we're paying a pretty penny for it. So somebody yeah. ought to call. I don't. I legit don't. Like, like all all of our computers, because we that's what we've been trying to do for the last like month and a half is trying to figure out where the issue is coming from yeah because like we'll go live on live stream but then sometimes they'll go live like at night and right before they're about to go live it shuts down so we can't connect to to the, this computer you yeah know what I mean? that's so, so good yeah. <sighs> okay hi everybody so anyway listen this is this is real. This is my phone. This, we still have, you know what? We're fasting here. We ain't trying to put anything out, but um, we're, we're still in the studio. Um, if you heard a little bit, um, the internet is down in the entire office. God knows why. God knows why. Who knows? Who knows? Who cares? I've got connection through my phone, so if it's kind of spotty, let me know. Is it okay? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear, like, you know, everything good? Two thumbs up, y'all. Okay, fantastic. So anyway, as I was saying, so, um, can you hear me? Am I coming in clear? All good in the hood. Thank you. Now I'm going to, like, not 
read any of the comments so I can just like finish this. Because uh, there is prayer for anybody who's around this area, Champion Christian Center, go boop, do it. Um, so anyway, so it, you're not just a piece of the puzzle. Like you are, you're the main, you're the main piece. You're, you're, you're the whole purpose for, for Jesus Christ coming down was because he had you in sight. And so you have to understand that, that, that even, even Sarah, like God had made a promise to Abraham, but it could not have been fulfilled until Sarah lined up her faith with what it was that God had said. So that's really important for you to know, because if we continue to live life as just like, oh, I'm just kind of here, just in the peripheral things, there's not really something that, and listen, God needs to do something through you and he's waiting on you. He's not just going to do it. The things of God don't just like magically happen and they're just not like automatic. They're not. They have to be um, accessed. There, 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 there has to be uh, uh, something on the inside of you that unlocks what God has said. You, I'm talking about, not me, not your pastor, not anybody else, but you. And so in Genesis 17, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this because like I said before, it obviously wasn't Abraham's issue. Abraham had plenty of kids outside of Sarah, but when God showed up now, what was the difference there? What was the difference between like the times where, um, the Lord or the, the voice of the Lord spoke to Abraham, um, and, and he received that vision. He received that, that, uh, knowledge and understanding of God's word about what was about to transpire. Where the heck was Sarah? You hear nothing about where Sarah was, right? And so it's, it's because we as, as believers, the easy thing is to kind of like ride on the coattails of somebody else's faith. Pastors included. Your husband is included. Your mother's included. Your grandmother is included. Can I tell you? There's some people that will just go to church because their grandmother's still alive. And you're like, the moment she's dead, I ain't never coming back here. We just do things to appease the grandparents. And so I'm telling you this because this is the reality of it. Most people just want to kind of like ride the coattails of somebody else's faith of what they've developed in the past. And God is saying, no, no, I'm not doing anything until you get your act together. And so where was, where was, where was Sarah all those other times where God, uh, where Abraham is seeking the, the face of the Lord. And she's just thinking, oh, he's the man of God. Yay. I just got to play a little part. And so in verse 17, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. And I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What more? I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become nations and kings will be among them. I will confirm my covenant with you. And your descendants after you. From generation to generation, this is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And I will give you the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner uh, to you and your descendants. It will be their possession forever and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, your responsibility, say my responsibility, is to obey the terms of the covenant. Your responsibility, your response to liberty is to obey the terms of covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must, must keep. Each male among you must first be circumcised. Then he goes all into that thing. Okay. And then how does God re re respond? <clears throat> I mean, uh, Abraham, how does he, he respond? Then God said to Abraham, regarding Sarah, your wife. Because see, at this time, uh, you know, Abraham was saying, 
I see it. I see the vision. You've already told me this is old news. Like you already told me that I was going to have like descendants, right? That I was just going to see like as far as the, 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 the sand on the shore, like that, that was going to be my descendants. So I already know that that was going to happen. So, so take my son Ishmael and go ahead and, 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 and implement that Lord. And he said, no, I don't, that's not what I said. I said, I, I would do it through you and Sarah. I'm going to give you a son. And so it's, it's, it, it, so we, we take, we take that, that easy road instead of just, just obeying God and, and simply trusting in the word of God, just, just simply trusting, simply believing, simply having faith enough to say, I take you at your word and it's done. We got to do, we, he had to mess it up and be like, yo, Hagar, what's, what's good? You know, Hey. And so it was that. And so, so, you know, God came back on the scene and said, let me just, let me reiterate this. Okay. That it's not going to be through Ishmael and said, and, 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 uh, Genesis 18 verse 15 then God said to Abraham regarding Sarai or Sarai, your wife, her name will no longer be Sarai. From now, her name will be Sarah and I will bless her and give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly and she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. Then Abraham bowed down to the ground. But he laughed to him in, in disbelief. How could I become the father at, a, at the age of 100, he thought. And how could Sarah have a baby when she's 99 years old? So Abraham said to God, may Ishmael live under your special blessing. See, there it is. It's like even after he said that, he's like, I, I believe it. And may Ishmael live in that blessing. And, and what, what does he say? God said, no. He said, I didn't say Ishmael. He didn't say it like that, but you know what I mean. He said, no, Sarah, your wife, she she was going to give birth to a son for you. And you will name him Isaac. And I will confirm my covenant with him and his descendants as an everlasting covenant. So we already had a plan. He was like, Ishmael is not part of the plan. Sorry, I'll bless him. But the, the, the giving... Sarah, and you will name him Isaac and I will confirm that everlasting covenant. As for Ishmael, I'll bless him too. He said, you know, you know, he'll become the father of 12 princesses, yada, yada, yada. And when God had finished speaking, he left. And so um, it, it, it says here. Abraham was 90 years old when he was circumcised and Ishmael, his son, was 13. Both Abraham and his son, Ishmael, were circumcised on that same day along with all the other uh, men and boys of the household, whether they were born or bought as slaves. All were circumcised uh, with him. The Lord appeared again to Abraham near the oak road belonging to Mamre. One of the days that Abraham was sitting in the entrance tents on the hottest day, he looked up and noticed three men standing by. When he saw, he ran to meet them. My Lord, he said, if it pleases you, stop in. And so, okay, so, so all of a sudden everything changes, right? Because God is saying, like I told you, I'll give you a son through Sarah. But where's Sarah? And so all of a sudden, three men come by their tent. And so Abraham's like, yo, Sarah, like prepare some for us. So now Sarah's in it. Sarah's like, okay, I'm going to prepare this. I'm going to say. And so where is Sarah, your wife? In uh, verse nine, it says the visitors asked. And Abraham said, she's in the tent. She's right here. So she could hear what we have to say. She's right here, Abraham. And uh, she's inside the tent of them said, I will return to you about this time next week and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Sarah was listening to this conversation from the tent. Because why? Because she was there. Now all of a sudden, she's not just like busy off doing something else, just riding on the coattails of Abraham. Now she heard that, that the, the last word and she's like, wait a minute, I have a part to play. The next time these people come to visit, I'm there. I'm positioning myself to be there. I'm going to 
learn about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. And Sarah was afraid because she's like, oh, I didn't say that. I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh, Lord. And he's like, oh, but you did laugh. But you did laugh. Now turn with me to Hebrews 11 as we close up. The importance of having an understanding of what you're praying is absolutely essential. How many times? Am I still on? Child. Though she was barren and was too old, she believed. And in another translation, it says, Sarah herself believed. That's like redundant. Sarah herself. Like, okay, no, we get that it's Sarah herself. Sarah herself believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead. Nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sands on the seashore, there is no way to count them. Hebrews 11, 11 through 12. So it was by faith that Sarah herself had to come into alignment with the word of God and have faith to believe that she had a part to play in it. Okay, so anyway, let me finish this up because it's literally, it's burning on the inside of me and I don't, I don't care if you have to listen to this and we'll just kind of like mash it up uh, and into one video um, at some point because... I don't even care. Uh, so anyway, it was, it was Sarah who had to hold to God's promise and come into alignment. Um, and, and because you know how, how she knew, she knew, she knew what the word said, but it was until she actually understood it for herself that she had a part to play in it. And I find it very interesting that it was Sarah was there. She was in the tent. She had positioned herself to hear, incline her voice or her ear to the voice of the Lord and say, you know what? I, they're waiting on me. I could have, this could have already happened had I already come to the knowledge that God wants to use me. Because God said, I, I'm using Sarah. I'm giving Sarah a child. I didn't say nothing about Hagar. I didn't say nothing about Keturah. I said, I would give you a son. And now his name's going to be Isaac and it will be given to Sarah, your wife, and she will be the mother of many nations. The promise must find the faith. That was said by Mensa Odebell. The promise must find the faith. If you are looking for a promise, if you're holding on to a promise, the promise in and of itself is just the starting piece. You got to implement the faith to believe it. And that's when the prayer, I mean, I'm telling you, that's when it, it, you, you get kicked into overdrive and you're like, what? It, it, it's a different kind of gear. It's a different kind of setup when you have all of that kind of just like, you know, come into alignment. Wait a minute. I've got, now I've got the word. I understand the word has to do with me. Dang. I have a lot more than just, a, just this word. I've got a word over the nation. God has a word over the nation, yes. God has a prophetic word over a season. Yeah, that, that happens. But he has a word for you. He has something for you to do. He has something for you to believe in. And so how many of us can attest to that? How many of us right now are, are we, everything is postponed until we decide to get into alignment with what the word of God says. And unfortunately, very unfortunately, just because the, the word is released and it never happens doesn't mean that God didn't want that to happen. Just because the prophet said that you will bear a child and you haven't b uh, uh, had a child, that doesn't, you know, that, that doesn't make God's decision for you to have a child any less valid. When are you going to get into alignment and say, ah, oh, yeah, God wants me to do it. God wants me to believe it. In this time of prayer and fasting, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to take the word of God, what the word of God has to say, and I'm going to pray in response to that. 
God, you already said that I was healed. Your word declares it. That's why we have it so easy. Y'all, I can tell you right now, the disciples up in heaven are like, they're, they're giving you like the side eye, the stink eye, like, you know, because it's like you had it so easy. You had the word of God. You had his spirit. You have the blood of Jesus behind you. You've got everything afforded. It is literally so stinking easy. And, and, and you're still not seeing the breakthrough. You know, before they had to like Abraham, like he, he was believe he, it, it was, you know, God had created covenant with him. There was like a new dispensation of, 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 there, there was a brand new covenant brought to the surface of that. You're not, you, you don't have a, a, like a brand new covenant happening through you. All you got to do is fall back on what they've already, what's already afforded you. Abraham, Moses, Jesus. Uh, you know, all of these, uh, I mean, they've already laid like such a fantastic path for you to just walk in freely. And we continue to just kind of like roam around in the desert, just walking. Do you think it was God's, it was a week's trip from Egypt to the promised land. Do you think it was God's idea to have them wander in the, in the desert for that long, an extra 40 years? Just going around in circles. Literally, look at a map the next time where the Israelites went after they were released from their freedom, from their slavery. I mean, it's just, it was like one fat circle. And it's like, how many times do, do we have to go through the same thing? How many times do we have to have a toxic relationship before we, we get, it, you know, it in our brains that, oh, crap. Yeah, I have something to do with it. In fact, I'm the only one that has anything to do with my current circumstance right now. And if I don't believe it for myself, no one can do it for me. My pastor can't do it for me. And I see it. It's not me who's got the answer. But people have put the faith in for, uh, you know, like uh, it's the man of God. The man of God has the answer. No, God wants the word of God is the answer. And God wants you to tap into this. And so we're just a point of contact. So that you could exercise the faith that you already have. So the next time that you, you, you're in service, it's not, oh, that man of God has my answer. It's, it's, I have the answer based on the word of God. I've already prayed and fasted about it. Now when I go, he's going to be the point of contact that when I receive my, my, my healing, it's going to be when I touch. And, and then God gives you those things to implement for your faith. They're, 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 it's, it's to, to uh, you know, to move to use your faith that individual person doesn't have the power to heal you right you know that right he doesn't have the power to just God is moving through them right but it's also somebody's faith look how many times that there were people that would come to Jesus like that woman whose daughter was 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 going crazy and, 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 and she's like, please help my daughter. And, and, you know, Jesus looks at her and he's like, I, I, I didn't come for the Gentiles. And, and she said, yeah, but Hey, even dogs get the crumbs from the master's table. And God looked at her and was like, who are you? It's done girl. Go. It is done. And that's where God wants you to be right now. He wants you to say, you know what? I don't care. What it's for, who it's, this is for me. Because ultimately when we continue to carry that, oh, this is just for everybody. But then when it comes to me as an individual, <clears throat> I don't count. And that's where the devil would try to, to keep you down every single time. It's like, oh, but for me, I don't know. I know God will do it. And if he did it for her, he can do it for anybody here. But will he do it for you? That's, that's where that faith comes in, into play. That's where it really matters. You need to believe God for yourself. And if you don't believe God for yourself, things will, it, it, it'll just, it, you know, it'll be prolonged. So what is it that you're believing God for? Is it a kid like Sarah? Are you trying to get help from, from X, Y, Z? And God is saying, no, I just want you to believe me that I can do it for you like Sarah did. And it was Sarah's faith that opened up that dispensation of grace to humankind. Sarah, religious people don't want you to know about that, that it was a woman who had to come and, and, and complete that covenant. A woman had to get her, her behind in gear to believe God and take him at his word. And so right now, I want you to lift your hands up 
because this message is for you. This message, you could quit, 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 you know, trying to uh, like put it on, on, on God again. It's you. He wants to do a work through you. And if you don't align yourself up with what the word of God says, if you don't do like Daniel did and start searching the word of God concerning what's happening right now with my life, What's happening right now with my nation? What's happening with my family? I got to get in, in line with the word of God. And then I'm, my prayers change. Then I'm like, no, this is what your word declares over my life. You said that you would make me a happy mother. That's what you said. You said that I would lend to many nations and never borrow. That's what you said. I didn't quote that. You said that. And when you line your prayers up with the word of God, God all of a sudden is like, oh, she's, she's talking to me. Because that's my language. This is my language. This is God's language. And so when you begin to speak God's language, all of a sudden, these prayers that you've been praying for so stinking long, all of a sudden, it's just like they collide. Because this is what faith, the, faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. And so if you don't have the word of God, then your faith is null and void. Don't even pray, son. Because you're praying with fear. Don't even pray. But faith, faith to declare the word of God in your prayers. That's, that's where the explosion happens. And, oh my gosh, there it is. There it is. I see it. I see it with my spirit. I might not have it right now. I might not have it manifested in my, but I see it. Oh my gosh, I see it. Thank you, Lord. And that's where the manifestation comes. So lift up your hands right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you would begin to place upon every person that's watching this broadcast now, right now, and in the reruns, a desire to get in your word and seek after your understanding. We understand that faith without true knowledge of what your word says is, is null and void. We could continue to pray prayers and, and we, we don't get anything we want to get because we can't even pray as, as your word declares for us to pray. We pray amiss. We don't even know what we're praying for, for. I don't know where that fur came. It, but, but Lord, today I declare that there would be a hunger and a thirst in every individual, especially in this time of prayer and fasting, to seek after what your message is for our lives, us as individuals, me, myself, so that we can pray according to your word and declare the turnaround because you've given us the power, you've given us the strength, and you've given us the faith to see the turnaround in our lives. We are not going to depend on somebody else. I'm not depending on my husband. I'm not depending on the preacher. I'm not depending on, on uh, my financial status. I'm not depending on the president. I am going based on the word of God. And if God is for me, nothing can be against me. So in the name of Jesus, I impart that faith in your word to your people right now in Jesus name. And by Friday, Lord, I thank you for the manifested uh, 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 testimony in our lives in Jesus name. And everybody said, Amen. I love you. Sorry about that. You, the internet. And we'll mash them up together. And maybe you could see the rerun and stick with me the whole time. But lots of you did. So God bless you. We're going to go to prayer. I'll see you at 12. Tune it back in and we're just going to continue praying. Love you. What's up? This is Jonathan Shuttlesworth inviting you to our fasting and prayer services to begin the new year 2020. You know, how you begin a year matters. And when you begin it in fasting and prayer, anyone will tell you that's participated with us in the past that you see God do amazing things. Look at the change in the nation since we've started doing these meetings and praying for America. And then you talk to people who have been a part of it. The same God that's bringing great change to America brings change to the people who take time to humble themselves and pray on behalf of their nation and their church and their generation. So I don't want you to miss out on it. January 2nd through the 22nd at Champion Christian Center every day at noon and 7 p.m. Everybody can't come for all 21 days, but everyone can come for three days. You might have to get on a plane or a bus or an ox cart or a rickshaw, whatever you have to do. Get to the greater Pittsburgh area and join us for these life-changing meetings. Mark chapter 9, Jesus clearly said that there's certain limitations, certain things that won't happen unless you combine fasting with prayer. But when you combine them, it's explosive. This is going to be the greatest year you've ever had as you hook in with God. I look forward to seeing you to start the new year. God bless you.